If you decide to buy a property with another person, say your wife, your family members, or even your friends, there are a number of implications you need to be aware of. Since you are more than one involved in the purchase of that property, you are involved in what is referred to as joint ownership. So, in this video, we'll discuss what to look out for, how to buy property jointly, and how you can manage a property that is jointly owned. Let's go in. Any property purchased by two or more persons is referred to as jointly owned. It means all the rights, privileges, claims, and all are owned together by all the parties involved in that deal. So, let's look at this scenario. You want to buy a piece of property with your wife. Let's agree you've done your due diligence and are satisfied and it comes with the documentation part. First things first, the rule of thumb states that all parties' names involved in that purchase should be written out in full as separate entities. If you bear Mrs. Francisca Ogundele and your husband bears Mr. John Ogundele, the names should be written out on all documents as pertaining to that property as Mr. John Ogundele and Mrs. Francisca Ogundele, not Mr. and Mrs. Ogundele. Reason is because in the case of separation from the marriage or death of any of the partners, another person can come into that marriage and of course will be regarded as Mr. or Mrs. Ogundele as the case may be. In that case, such individual may lay a claim to your property and if you do not have more convincing evidence, you would end up losing your rights and claim to that property. So, buying land with another person has the following implications. Number one, there are more than one owners of the piece of land. Number two, no one person can sell or dispose a piece of land without the consent of the other party. What this means is that to sell a piece of land that is owned by two or more people, all the parties involved in that transaction must consent to the sale or disposal as the case may be. In the case one of them do not consent, you would have the case of what is referred to as litigation or defective title in the legal space. In the case where the other party is dead, the surviving party who wants to sell the land to you has to provide the death certificate as well as a sworn affidavit attesting to the fact that all the rights of that property has been transferred to him or her. Also, in the case of death of one of the parties to the landed property transaction, we cannot just assume that his right to the property would pass on to the next of kin. As important as this sounds, not many people are aware of the legal implications as relating to transferring of property. The right to a piece of land of a dead party can only be transferred to his next of kin if the joint ownership structure was an ownership by entirety. Otherwise, in the case of what is referred to as joint ownership in the legal space, the right of the dead party in that transaction will pass on to the other surviving parties in the transaction. In the case where one party in the transaction begins building on the land, under the law, the building is owned by the joint owners. In fact, the guy who went ahead to build cannot decide to sell without the consent of the other party legally. The best way to manage a joint ownership of a piece of land is to approach a lawyer and prepare what is known as a deed of partition. The deed of partition indicates what rights each person has as well as the limits under the contract. It also states how the property would be shared among the parties. In the case where a partition is not possible, it is recommended that a lawyer prepares a document detailing the management of the property as well as final sale and sharing. This document would also indicate the next of kin details in the case of the death of any of the partner and what rights 
would be transferred. If you're buying a property that is previously jointly owned, do your due diligence to verify all the owners of that property. After this, make an offer in writing to all parties involved and get the consent by the way of writing or signature to that sale. At the end of the transaction, all parties involved should sign on all documents of transference, namely the deed of assignment and the contract of sales. We hope this series has been enlightening and eye-opening for you as usual. Keep staying tuned for more content.